All right, um, good morning, everyone. So my name is Peter Susco. I am the coach at Calvert Hall College High School in Baltimore, Maryland. Previously, I was at George Mason, and then I debated at the University of Mary Washington, um, which is a small school in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Before that, I debated in Pennsylvania at Cathedral Preparatory School, which is the school in Erie, Pennsylvania. Our conversation today is new Fs, um, both debating and um, debating against, so both reading and reading against. And we're going to be talking about some things to consider when you're considering breaking a new app, and then some things to do when a new app is broken against you. Typically, and um, you know, it depends on the proliferation and just the work ethic of your two A's. Um, for those two N's out there, you'll typically debate more new apps than you read as an affirmative. So um, it's certainly um, it's useful to have these conversations. Um, these are things that uh, conversations I have with my students going into the um, late tournaments um, in the end of the year tournaments. And it is something that can get you to the next step. So for example, um, I, um, when I debated in college was a uh, first round, which is like, if you look at the TOC equivalent for college debate, it just means I was a top 16 team in the country and I got an automatic qualification to the national debate tournament. And new apps are the thing that um, really helped me out. We broke a new app in the octafinals of the NDT against the number four team from Harvard, absolutely demolished them. And then that paved our way to get into the semifinals of the NDT. So new apps can get you to that extra level and they can help sustain you as well. So this conversation, um, simply put, we're gonna be talking about AF tips, neg tips, AF tips and neg tips. So we're gonna start with AF tips and this isn't gonna be a ton of slides. It's gonna be me just kind of touching on a couple of um, different spots of things to consider when you are reading a new app on the app side, when you're reading an app on the app side. So uh, I'm gonna take about 15 seconds, kind of let you look at a couple of these bullet points. Some of them make zero sense right now. Some of them will make more sense. These are the conversations that we're gonna have of things to consider when you are breaking new. So I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds on that. And that 30 seconds wasn't definitely because my dog is freaking out here. This is Chewy. So I apologize if he's um, uh, loud or if he barks at some point. He is currently um, being very, very aggressive this morning. So um, that is why we took those 30 seconds. Okay. So why break a new affirmative? Um, these are no duh things um, that you can um, do, but you should always think to yourself, why is this necessary? Um, breaking new affirmatives, working on a new affirmative takes a long time, uh, typically, um, just in my experience. Uh, maybe some people are much, much faster, um, but in my experience as a coach over multiple teams, um, all the steps that go into breaking a new affirmative, the thing you always want to ask is, why am I doing it in this specific round? Okay. You might break a new affirmative because your affirmative is absolute garbage and you continue to lose debates on it. You don't think it is sustainable. There's an inherency question. Um, these are all things to consider when um, considering breaking a new affirmative. Um, does it get you anything? Um, are, is the team that you're debating, are they going to read the same exact answers? And does this affirmative have some built-in trick for it? So for example, um, Last year's topic was criminal justice reform. My team started off the year reading a marijuana app and they were not super happy with the results. Um, marijuana was a camp app. It was something that people had prepared arguments to and it was a college topic about six years ago. So there's some detail of case neg picks, et cetera, et cetera, that they were not 100% on. 
So breaking new for them allowed them to basically start at a baseline level and they read this affirmative that was not produced at a camp. So there are benefits to um, breaking new, um, that you can break new to win a specific round, you can break new against a specific team, and I'll talk about some examples here and there. So you always want to ask yourself, is this necessary? Is this necessary to break a new AF? Is this going to get me something against the specific team that I'm debating? Now, scouting is one of the most crucial and impactful things you can do when you're A, creating a new app, and B, deciding who to read it against. So scouting is 100% the most important thing when you are preparing a new affirmative um, because you want to see, it looks like we got some people jumping in. Scouting, when you're trying to look for a new app, is something that is hugely, hugely important, okay? So you can go one of two routes with this, all right? And um, one route is breaking something entirely new that no school has seen, that, um, that no um, camp produced, and you're breaking new so that um, you are uh, basically forcing them to read generics and read impact defense. They don't have a specific case name designated to it. Or, and this is something that is hugely important and is something I'm a big proponent of, you scout and see something that other teams have read, but the quality of those teams and the quality of that evidence is not the best. So let me give you an example of scouting that can help you win AF debates when you're breaking new. So when I was a first round, um, the, the topic was nuclear weapons policy. So some affirmatives decreased the size of our nuclear weapons. Some affirmatives changed our nuclear weapons policies. And my my team um, in my 2A, we read an ICBM ZAF, which is really funny with, you know, with that one lab that's reading ICBM ZAF. We read that after the entire year. Um, and, you know, we had relative success. We were able to get to deep elimination rounds, but we needed that next step. We needed that next affirmative at the national debate tournament. So instead of reading something that nobody had cut before, um, like one team, <laughs> from um, Whitman, which is a school in, in, on, in the West, on the West Coast, read like an Australia nukes app, which was just awful. Um, what my partner did was he went back and saw affirmatives that teams that weren't at our national ranking read. And then he was able to look at that and look at the scouting for it. So we ended up reading a TNW ZAF, um, which is this other type of nuclear weapon and specifically for Turkey. And the only team that read that after during the season was this team. They are relatively good, um, but they were literally the only team that read it and he cut it and then he cut more and more and he expanded on it to a huge level. So why is that beneficial? Why, why is it beneficial to read uh, as new something that's already been read? Well, there's a couple of things. One, is you already have scouting for all of that. So you already know, typically, um, teams are not gonna be producing huge, huge new case negs for these tournaments. So you know generally what they're gonna be reading against it. So we were able to predict what their deterrence answers were to it, what their um, Japan prolif answers were to it, what their counterplan answers were to it, because this team had read it against a bunch and a bunch, a bunch of teams. So you can also go the route of reading something, and this is where scouting comes into play, because you get to see what was this top team's one and C against it. What was this other top top team one and C against it? And you can even see this last year um, with that Bellarmine team that won the TOC. They broke a marijuana AF, and they were able to see because a lot of you know top teams in the country last year had some marijuana debates because it was early on. It wasn't camp AF. People were reading. My team was reading it. And then they were able to update it and able to get the best cards on it and then had the benefit of having the best EV, having an affirmative that they knew what people were going to be reading about it against it largely. And then they were able to win a lot of debates from that. So scouting is something hugely important. Scouting is also a prerequisite when you're breaking new. 
of deciding who do you want to break this against. You should never break new against a team that you think you can beat straight up or you can think you can beat on the affirmative that you're reading. This should not be something you're reading round one. This should not be something that you're reading round two. Now, end of the year tournaments is a completely different ball game. You know, you need to scrape for every win. I can, I completely, I completely get that. But if you, if you don't need it, all right, at a tournament, think about the tournaments that you've been to, right? When somebody breaks new, everybody's talking about it. It's the most recently modified thing on the wiki and people are taking a look at it. If you're breaking new earlier on, you allow other teams to be thinking about the docs, other coaches to be thinking about what they're going to be saying. And you want to make that as late as possible. You want to make that as late as possible. So when you're scouting, you know, um, Kentucky is like 80 or 90 entries right now, which is ridiculous. And it's not even August yet. Um, you can see, you know, what teams would I potentially want to read that against, you know, what teams were pretty successful last year. Um, and what teams, would I want to read this new new affirmative against to get that extra step to have that uh, really, really good early jump? So scouting is something hugely, hugely important in terms of the um, whether or not to break, what to break process, all right? Now, here are things that you should be thinking about, and we're going to go through kind of each off-case argument when you are breaking new and when you're choosing what to break new, okay? So... First one is counter plans. This is not any different than um, how you're building an affirmative to start the season. I'm sure that you've had conversations with your lab leaders about why you chose the specific affirmative that your lab chose, right? It's to have an affirmative that has a um, Fed key warrant to answer the state's counter plan, an agent specific warrant. So like a Congress key warrant to beat back the executive counter plan or the court's counter plan, or it has a, not, or, and it has a certainty key argument to answer process counter plans that you're going to be debating. Now, the reason that I bring these things up and these are just general, you know, um, things that you should be thinking about for an affirmative is when you are breaking new, unless you are breaking something that's been read against, in which case, you know, they'll just pull up their one and see from that previous debate, they are coming at you with only generics. So if you're breaking new, they will read, you know, one or two agent counter plans. They'll read their process counter plan of their choice that they like. They'll read their state's counter plan. So when you are debating new, the thing that you should always be aware of is what are my answers to the generics? And do I have a specific niche argument that slays this specific art, this specific AF or this specific counter plan. So do I have, for example, um, at some point teams might read agency specific water consumption affirmatives. So they might read um, an affirmative and this just depends on how wild tea gets. Um, like there might be an affirmative out there that's about um, water consumption of a specific agency. So like surveillance was a topic. They might like an affirmative might cut water to the NSA and then read a surveillance bad affirmative. Um, and then it's specific to that specific agency. Um, I, I don't know, states would probably solve that, but they might read some specific agency argument to try and beat back um, a counter plan. Courts is like the typical example, you know, a new app that, um, rules on a specific court ruling so that it can beat back the executive counter plan, the Congress counter plan. So your affirmative should be built to either A, um, have good answers to it, or B, really, um, and this is something that's uh, hugely important, B, be something that has an advantage that's literally just an agent, uh, an agent advantage, an agent advantage. So for example, um, Last year, um, there were advantages that were built to answer the um, state's counter plan. There were advantages built to answer process counter plans. And you can have specific ones to answer that. So that's something that you should be thinking about is, do these cards have really good certainty key arguments? Do these cards have really good Fed key arguments? What would be my kind of uber specific thing to answer the executive? Because the other benefit you get for these new AFs is, you know, with our infinite infinite prep, you can kind of also have practice debates against teammates. You can have 
Um, you can shoot your one NCs to like alums that are college debaters or your assistant coaches or, or your coaches and think, what would you go to and what would you, what would you say and have those debates? So um, be thinking about counter plans because um, conditionality, all right, is not a thing, right? You cannot win conditionality when you're breaking new largely. Um, when you break new, you have to answer that stupid new apps argument, uh, new apps bad argument. And then the dish comes out and you got to answer it. So you should have good answers. You should have already thought about the slayer to these counter plans that are going to be coming after you and they're going to be coming after you hot. So, um, and feel free to shoot questions in the chat um, as we're having this because, um, you know, it would be more beneficial for you to ask specific questions related to each of these topics than at the end. Either way, we're going to do Q&A, so don't worry about that. So disad, all right? Disad answers. Okay. So I wrote politics um, because that is the DA. And um, some new Fs, and I would say if you're not breaking, if you're breaking a new F that doesn't have some insane answers, some insane straight turns to politics, I don't know why you're reading this F. Uh, maybe it doesn't have a case neg from a camp. Um, but you should be building your affirmative with the politics disadvantage in mind because the politics disadvantage, all right, is back. It is the best neg argument that a policy 2N can have. So it is something that you should be thinking about. It should be, you should have cards that are talking about how it's popular with everybody. Republicans like it, moderates like it, um, obviously Democrats would like it. And then by doing that, by breaking new, you have these great, great politics answers. It also resolves all of the problems above that I listed, right? Agent counter plans, courts, what's the net benefit? some stupid courts DA, um, internal net benefit, trash. If it's always politics, it's always, always, always politics, or it's an artificial net benefit and you can just beat it on the permutation. So politics is gonna be the thing. You know, If they read three counter plans, but the net benefits politics, as long as you win a straight turn to politics, you're good, it's over. So as an effective 2A, you can think to yourself, how can I get myself back in the game when I get 10 off and the politics disadvantage is something that's hugely important. And this is where scouting comes into play again, right? You should be looking and seeing what people's arguments are. I've said this multiple times um, when I debated, you know, a team would ask me what my previous two and R's would set were. And I would say politics, 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 framework, politics, politics, framework, framework, politics, politics, politics. So a smart team that wants to break new against me would break something that has really, really good link turns to the politics disadvantage. When I was debating um, in college, a team did this. Um, they, at this end of the year tournament, broke a, um, it was the immigration topic, and they broke this religious freedom um, affirmative that provided visas to people um, fleeing from religious persecution. And they had really, really good link turns um, to politics. And I got rolled uh, because I had I hadn't seen the affirmative coming. Their politics cards were better than the you know link cards that I cut at the beginning of the summer. So you should be thinking about what the best answer is to politics. All right, T um, is relatively self-explanatory. Um, if you like, people are going to go for T. It de really depends on what area you choose, right? So like that Puerto Rico affirmative at this camp kind of fell th fell through but somebody might find cards during the season, might revive that. Um, what are the tea debates? You know, um, Are you going to get into protections debates? Are you going to get into tea water resources debates? Are you going to get into tea its debates? Um, you'll kind of know as you're picking what affirmative, um, what tea debate you're going to get into. So if tea is something that is a strength of yours, if you really enjoy having all of these tea debates, then you can kind of push the bounds of it. If not, you can also pick an affirmative that is topical so that you don't have to worry about that. So like that marijuana affirmative, um, I'm the, the plan test is escaping me. I know there's some plan, plans of marijuana that people had some issues with with tea, but um, largely I don't think they had a lot of tea debates when that team won the TOC reading 
and breaking new with a marijuana app. Now, um, with the critique, okay, this is another thing that people might go for. Um, they might have their kind of bread and butter critique. It's something that they do as their break glass strategy. Um, maybe they're a security debater. Maybe they're a psychoanalysis debater. Maybe they really like cap, et cetera, et cetera. What, your, what, what that critique is. You should know what critiques your affirmative is susceptible to and kind of go along with that. So for example, um, my team at, at the end of the year tournaments, um, the affirmative that we broke at the TOC um, and it didn't really go well. So this isn't the best example, but you know, um, there's things you can learn from. Um, we read a domestic terror AF. And the reason that we read the domestic terror AF um, is because the cards were insane. Um, and there were people writing left and right because of the January 6th insurrection. So there were very, very fire cards. They were very, very recent, very, very new. All of the cards that had been cut to that point, you know, people had read the affirmative before, but um, we thought that the evidence was on our side for that. Now, that being said, okay, the affirmative was a domestic terror act that went after white nationalists. So it was an affirmative that says, you know, the state going after people is good, specifically white nationalist, but they were really good um, agamben links. There's a really good um, biopower links to that critique. So that was something that it was susceptible to and that we had to make sure that we had a strategy against. So when you're reading a specific affirmative, you know what critiques you're vulnerable to. And that's where scouting also comes into play too. Like, if you're breaking new against a team that only reads set call or only reads Afropess and your affirmative has nothing to do, has no um, built-in uniqueness question, has no built-in link defense, has no built-in specific strategy against the critique, you shouldn't be reading it. You shouldn't be reading a new AF. Now, the next thing is impact turns, okay? You should also, as you're going with your new AF, be aware that people break new, and the first thing that somebody does as a 2N is they look at their Dropbox and see what they have. So for example, um, with the impact turn debate, um, there are times that if you're not doing appropriate scouting, and again, I talk about scouting over and over again, you can get absolutely rolled. You can get absolutely rolled. So let's provide an example for this. Um, my team, uh, we, we, we're an East Coast team, so we go to you know, the Bronx tournament, we go to this Georgetown Day School, um, we go to some, you know, the Mamrinic tournament, um, and a team broke new against us at, I believe it was the Bronx tournament. And you know, we were going through our pre-round strategy, what is gonna be new, what, what's gonna be read, we talked about prepared one NCs, and then this team, and I'm not gonna name the team, read a, I think it was an espionage app, um, but like the first advantage was like econ and my team, um, if this team had done any scouting reports, um, if they had looked at the neg wiki whatsoever, um, my team loves to DDEV, like that's their thing. Uh, they try to get the DDEV. They, in fact, um, and I'll um, jump back to this in a second. They read a DDEV AF against the K team. So DDEV is their jam. So we, I look at this one AC that this team read and they broke new. And then I see it's econ, debate's over. I didn't even have, I was very, very confident. It was a 3-0 very, very quickly. So be aware of the ability to be impact turned. And if you can't, um, you know, debate past an impact turn, you should not be A, reading that advantage or even reading that affirmative. Um, and sometimes this comes back to bite you too. This is something that happened to uh, my team at NDCA this past year where we did the like Georgia run and gun strategy. We had an advantage that had like five impacts to it. We had another advantage that had like six impacts to it. This team um, from Miami was very, very slow. So we were just going to kind of roll them because we were the faster team. But um, one of the advantages that we had broken the previous um, prelims had an oil dependent scenario to it. We uh, were breaking the other new advantage that we were very confident about, but we kept, the, we kept the first advantage. And then they rolled us on an oil DA for like eight minutes in a two NC. And it was a team that we had um, been relatively better against that previously in the season. So you wanna be preparing for your impact work. You wanna be preparing 
for your impact turn debates. Next, impact work, okay? Um, depending on if this new app is something that you want to have be a one, one hit wonder or be the app that sustains you multiple tournaments, there are things that you should think about. One being impact work. Um, you all have um, school, you all have your different activities that you need to throw to get onto your college resume. So there's only so much time in the day. And what you should be doing is also thinking about how can I recycle? How can I incorporate things from the previous app to this app? Sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes it doesn't work, but other times you want to try and do that as much as possible. So that can be impact work, that can be block work, where you're literally plugging in the specific answers that you want to, that you want to have. This, the specific answers that you want to have. Impact work, the, the most important thing to think about is you should be looking at it from the impact turn perspective. Can this debate survive a democracy bad eight minute two NC? Eight minute two NC? Can this survive a DDEV eight minute two NC? And those are things you should be thinking about when you're putting your advantage together as well is do I have just one impact card or do I have a couple impact cards that answer different components of the impact turn? You should also, as you're preparing and, and looking to break this new app, have your coach or have you know your partner or somebody on the team. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, you can also be you know asking other people for help of what would a 10 off debate look like? All right, uh, conditionality is thrown out the window. And you should be able to be able to withstand multiple 10 off, nine off, eight off debates. If you can't, then that's a problem. And that's something that you should not be read, you shouldn't be reading new for that for that very reason. Um, when people have an affirmative that they're they see in front of them, they typically don't read that many off. When it's an affirmative that people have read before, um, judges are much more conducive to vote on conditionality bad against four off than four off in a new app. Another thing you should be thinking about is the judge, okay? Um, you get the similar judges all of the time. Um, you get judges that are, um, you know, high school coaches that will be following the season, that will be help working at camps. You'll get judges that are college debaters, um, that are people that are um, very, very detail-oriented that are debating at a uh, very, very high level, and they're coming to get some cash for the weekend. And you'll get judges, you know, you have that favorite judge that um, is somebody that, you know, takes time out of their weekends to come and judge. They don't cut cards, but they're there. So have a judge in mind of, this is the judge that I would love to read this in front of. Um, some judges have arguments that they love. They love, 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 love an impact turn debate. They love, 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 love a T debate. Um, and have that list of judges with the list of affirmative teams, uh, the list of teams when you're scouting tournaments. Um, because there's nothing worse than reading an affirmative that a judge absolutely hates. And you knew that if you looked at the judge philosophy or you had kind of talked to somebody prelims versus elims. I've already kind of talked about this uh, a little bit earlier. Um, it really just depends on, you know, how long you want this new affirmative to sustain yourself. And then lastly, a drill you can do other than the 10 off drill is the 10 minute cross X. It can be 20, it can be 30 minutes. Um, it gets a little sad after 10. Um, if, and sometimes people struggle to ask questions. It should be able to um, sustain and um, be able to withstand a 10-minute cross-examination. And you should have your teammates try to pick it apart, absolutely destroy it. And if there's a question that you can't answer, you know, go back to the drawing board and try to find a way to answer it. Or if it's a, a, a key key slayer, that can allow you to kind of pick and go with that specific um, problem that you had and then build on it. So you can do a 10-minute cross-examination drill. Okay, um, so questions, you feel free to throw it into the chat about um, new affirmatives. I um, will have a Q&A, but if you have any specific question, a specific scenario, or a specific issue, feel free to throw that into, into the chat um, now before I switch over to the next side. <clears throat> okay. So 
Um, and we'll have a Q and A. So, you know, um, if a question pops up, a question pops up. New house on the next side. <clears throat> Um, so scouting is like the most important thing to think about, um, when it's either side of the debate, um, you can, even if you can't predict, um, what somebody's going to read, you can kind of predict what their jam is. So if an affirmative, for example, um, reads a cybersecurity app and reads cyber impacts the entire time you can at least be pretty confident that that 2A, if they are you know, being efficient, are, gonna, are going to try to have some cybersecurity component of their new affirmative. If a team has historically read, and this is kind of knowing your debate history, knowing you know, a team um, specifically, if there was an advantage, sorry. If there's an advantage or if there's some app that a team loved reading from the CJR topic, that impact work already exists. So for them, they're being efficient when they're trying to push things through or, you know, know where people went to camps. So if there's um, a, a camp app that somebody really, they debate that entire thing, the entire camp um, at the DDI or at UMESH, et cetera, what have you, have that list. And then you can kind of know, it doesn't have to be a physical list, but you can kind of predict what area they're going to be going into. Now, when it comes to pre-round, all right, this is pre-round um, disclosure, pre-round cross X. Um, there are so many things you can get, you can trick people into saying, and you can kind of get people to admit if it's new or if it's not really new, right? So if they say a new AF, um, you can kind of do a couple of things. And this is, what I, this is what I do sometimes when my teams don't go through this process. One is I'll say, is it new? Or is it new for you or is it new for the team itself? And if it's new for, for them, but the team has read it, they still need to disclose it because that, that, that's not actually new. And then you can kind of list, you know, is it this affirmative? Is this this affirmative? If a 2A is an obnoxious little uh, something, um, typically, you know, maybe they won't answer that question, but they'll be very, very quiet when you run through the list of affirmatives that their squad has read before. A lot of times you can bully them into at least um, saying it's some component of that. Sometimes people will read a new advantage and you can kind of run through all the advantages that teams have read. So I do this a lot on big squads, you know, like you have your GBN, your GBS that has like 20 teams. And a lot of times what's being read and that's new is not actually new. All right. New for you versus new for the team. So you can get a lot of information out, out there. Um, just by doing and just by hounding them for about um, five, seven minutes of things. Now, the thing you're going to have to do is you don't start off like, is this new for you or new for the team? You go through and you write down all of the affirmatives that that squad has read before. And then you say, is it any of these? Okay. And then you can thread and listen. If you are cheating in pre-round prep, it's not cheating, but you can say like, you know, I don't want to have to make this an argument, um, especially with, you know, kind of blowing it up a little bit. And you might be able to trick them into saying what the affirmative is going to be. Check the wiki um, before the round. And by check the wiki, what I mean is um, you can look and see if they have two AC answers. The new AF might um, change. It might be a new AF, but a lot of times they're, they're, they're most of their answers to um, counter plans, most of their answers to disadvantages are going to re remain unchanged. So you can at least look at, you know, what's their impact defense to my politics DA? What's their, you know, what unique discards cards have they been reading? Are those cards good or not? And, you know, there are going to be new link cards that you're going to have to focus on, but um, that's something that you can focus on. Coaching, okay? So ideally, um, you know, a new app takes the coach out of the room, but that's not really the case. Um, with your coach, you can kind of, run through different scenarios and you can run through um, what you can prepare beforehand. So that's going to be in the prepare section. Um, they're kind of the similar thing, but you can predict like, what would this be? So for me in, in, you know, coaching before um, late tournaments in the season, um, 
I would tell my teams, what is your ideal one and C, your generic one and C against Congress ass? So they would throw, they would put a prep doc together. It'd be like 15 off. And then they would delete things as they're going through. So you can, you should have multiple prep docs based on different things, different components that it could be. So, you know, what is your 10 off versus courts apps? What is your 10 off versus an executive app? And by doing that, you at least have a baseline of things that you can have because, you know, certain counter plans are better than others. Um, certain counter plans apply to courts apps, certain counter plans apply to Congress apps, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Off case, okay? Your goal should be to read as many off case as possible, all right? Now, I'm not talking four or five T violations because that's asinine. Um, you should only have like two or three because a smart 2A would say, what? bright line meets all five of these together and no affirmative will meet it. And then topicality is absolutely dead. So a couple T arguments, an A spec argument. I don't like the new apps argument. People read it. And then you have, you know, your counter plans. You should have a counter plan has an internal net benefit that doesn't rely on like politics. So like last year, that was like the NGA counter plan. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be some version of that counter plan that inflates it. it might be some consult counter plan or some conditions counter plan that you have that's your thing of choice. Then um, you want to predict kind of what it, what, what it could be. So you can predict on an area that the topic is going. So, um, you know, it doesn't look like a lot of people are doing infrastructure apps, but um, people might go into infrastructure apps of, you know, an infrastructure app that, I don't know, um, helps the shipping industry be more um, efficient. Um, there might be an infrastructure app that like modernizes some things that take a bunch of water. Um, infrastructure might be the area that people jump into and think what would be my one and C against infrastructure type affirmatives. The literature base also dictates a lot of this. So like I was saying, um, my team read a domestic terror app and it's not because there was a new you know, plethora of CGR domestic terror stuff. It was because literally everybody was writing about domestic terror. The, t the terror cards were on fire. The um, research was really, really good. So kind of see where things are going in the season. That could be based off of, you know, what Biden does, what the EPA does. Um, you know, if there's a, a document, a review that's coming out with the, by the EPA, you can kind of see that they're gonna, there's going to be evidence there. At minimum, you know, you can predict that somebody is going to read a court staff at some point. So you can have your generic prep doc for the court staff. Prepare and coaching are um, similar. So I'll kind of jump um, past that. And then the last thing I'll talk about, and then we'll get into questions, is in round, what, what do you do? Okay. You should have a conversation with your coach and with your uh, partner um, of who's doing what when the new app is broken in the round itself. So the one AC starts and what's the two end doing? What's the one end doing? Um, I would recommend, and it really depends, you know, sometimes um, a two end likes to micromanage everything. I was not one of those people. My one end kind of put everything together and I did all the prep before the tournament. He kind of moved things together. Um, you could do the one end is um, literally just grabbing impact defense to make sure that there's terminal impact defense to literally everything in that debate. And then the 2N is looking at the solvency cards, is looking at the internal link cards to advantages to see if they can counterplan out of things, um, or is looking to see if there's a T argument, if there's a critique argument. Um, you should be doing all of the, you should be dividing up kind of the duties of that. Now, some people in cross-examination will be like, um, I'm just gonna roll cross-examination as prep, okay? I think that's a terrible idea because a lot of times with cross-examination, you are building a defense and you're building up your off case. So you're building why the state's counter plan solves. You're building why it links to politics. You're building why, you know, one of these advantages is absolute garbage. So one thing you can do uh, is, you know, I there's this one team that actually did prep during a speech. I don't know if it's allowed. They, it was allowed in this debate. You can do cross ex, you can do prep time before the cross examination. Have a conversation with your one end about what's going on, what should be in the one end C, and then allow that three minutes for the one end to put that stuff together so that you can kind of compose yourself and then start attacking the one AC in the cross examination. So 
you know, if you have an eight minutes of prep for the tournament, using one for the one in C is not a terrible thing. You typically don't want to be using three minutes for the one in C, but I get it, right? Like you have to come off strong. You have to come off with a bunch of arguments. So even then, sometimes that's beneficial too. So dividing up the duties that goes into the one AC and then using cross-examination as prep time for the one in C, which, you know, you is, is a normal thing. It's a no duh. I'm sure that you all kind of had thought about that before. So with that, uh, we're going to move to the question section. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to stop the recording and then you can have any questions. Feel free to shoot, um, shoot those about new affirmatives. So 